Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Business Wine and Cheese. BWC baby. That's what I'm talking about. Today we have Tom from Tom Barco Events. Correct. Welcome mate. Um, today we're drinking a Pinot Noir from Yarra Valley called True Colours by uh, Rob Dolan. Haven't had this one before. It came in one of those um, surprise Bino yeah. Mofo uh, Lucky Dips. So Lucky we'll see dips, how we yeah. go here. Pressure's on. Thank you, sir. Mate, so um, very good to have you on. So we always like to start with the origin story. So um, take us right back to where you were born and what you have done or what has happened in your life to make you you. Yeah, cheers. Well, cheers. cheers, thank you very much to start with. Um, well, we're going way, way back then. Um, mm -hmm. I suppose you should have a sip. All the way. Uh, we might mm, need another bottle for that. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so I grew up in Christchurch, New Zealand. Um, back, well, I'm 24 now, so 20 odd years ago I was born there. And it's, it's a good city, but compared to Melbourne, it's very small. So, um, you know, grow up there, you can certainly outgrow it pretty quick. Grew up in motor racing, so I competed in that. That was my sport. Um, so it wasn't BMX riding or skiing or anything. It was race cars and go-karts. So nice. that was pretty cool um, university for me. Met a hell of a lot of people, got to travel a lot, mainly just domestically, but with that, you know, every week is another adventure. And certainly you grow up quite quickly and need to be quite entrepreneurial mm. to, you know, raise sponsorship to just get the next opportunity. So that's how it all started for me. What um, about siblings? Yeah, Family sibling. Life. Got an older brother. Um, parents split when I was quite young, mm. so I was quite lucky to have you know two very strong uh, step parents on either side, which was nice. So the cool thing about step parents is they do it because they want to, not because they have to. <laughs> yeah. So uh, <laughs> so that's always a cool thing. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah, a lot of respect to them and for sure. Um, yeah, parents all had businesses growing up, so you know. Okay, so you're surrounded by it. Yeah, yeah, like it was only you know not only small business, but it was small business. You know, mum was a hairdresser and had her own salon ever since I can remember, and you know, dad had a couple of trucks and yep. stepmum's a mortgage broker and whatnot. So they're always best way to learn, mate. Awesome. For sure, and, yeah. and you grow up in that environment of going, oh well, I need to do something. I think. As a kid, you have to be better than your parents. It's just the golden yep. rule. Oh, so, um, yeah. so um, when I was at high school, we had the earthquake, which was quite big in Christchurch, yeah. which was definitely a big place for opportunity, as sad as it was. But um, yeah. I can remember one of my sponsors from motor racing saying, hey, look, mate, I'm not going to give you any more money to go racing because things are changing. But, you know, why don't you come and do some work with us? So I was 16 and we didn't have a school to go to because it was yeah. smashed. And, um, Jesus. Went there to building company, went and picked up rubbish and did some hard labour and it was horrible. Um, so went back, caught up with my mates a few days later and I had cash and they didn't. And they said, oh, well, where do we get this work? Come, we yeah. hook us up with some work. So my brain started ticking and uh, before I knew it, I had five or six of my mates coming to work every day and I'm renting <laughs> them out and clipping <laughs> the ticket every time. And um, I was 16 and... Probably Started a labour hire my, company. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty good. Um, so when when school rebuilt, I um, I went back one day a week, but the rest of the time <laughs> I was just that was just my prospecting was encouraging people to bunk to come and uh, come and make money. So that was um, cool. um, that. yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. It was um, a bit of a bit of chaos, but it was it was cool. And then um, yeah, went to a finance company to grow my business, and they said, well. You don't really have much of a business, mate, <laughs> but come and work for us. So um, yeah, I was 18 working in finance in New Zealand, which was cool. And then, um, yeah, and then about 19, not too much longer later, went to the Gold Coast for New Year's, thought this was pretty cool, and um, yeah, didn't bother going home. So <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> and here we are. So, you set up yeah. shop there. Well, that was an interesting story altogether. I okay. had another set. Cheers <laughs> <laughs> okay. to that. <laughs> um, I got a nickname, so my company, itself. So Tom Barker Events is my events brand, but um, you know, the parent licensing company, if you want to call it that, is 2 Humvee Group. And that name comes from a, a nickname I earned when I first went to Australia, which is Tommy 2 Humvee, because I um, yeah, went there with $200 in my bank. So <laughs> <laughs> it was a very much a, on a Thursday night, we go, hmm, I moved to Gold Coast on Saturday. Oh, so wow. <laughs> literally booked the flight, um, took my last paycheck from my company. and. Holy um, shit. Yeah, moved over and organised an apartment, did a job interview via Skype at some, you know, telemarketing company at the airport and 
just burned into it and here we are so yeah it was cool that's epic i love that yeah. story yeah. that's so cool that's really good so bless you <laughs> <laughs> the audience is sneezing um so mate so what you know from from that point how did you get into events but yeah. did, did you then continue to work when did yeah. you move to melbourne uh moved to melbourne last year so first arriving on the gold coast i think that comes out of a, a phase of just wanting to have a crack at something you know you grow up yeah. in a small city you're just eager to get out so for me it was just jump over see what happens everyone thought i'd be back in five minutes and um yeah it was bloody tough and like you know you guys would know in business yeah. anyone that's achieved anything not saying that i have yet very mm. early in the story but it comes out of a form of trauma or a form of you know struggle yeah you know you've really got to put your balls on the line to make something happen yeah. and um started out you know real estate just doing whatever i could moved up to brisbane and it was a tough few years and then how do you think you would have been if you didn't face that adversity if you didn't go through i'd just be doing nothing twiddling my thumbs i think yeah. it's the, the best thing mm. is i've always probably done this in life is extend myself further than mm what I probably should and have done. And you think, like, was it, like, growing up, was it, what, yeah. what, sort of, was it like a, a, a humble upbringing and, like, you know, where, yeah. where did, that, is it just specifically that event, the, the, I'm not saying the, an earthquake's not a big event, but was that specifically what tipped it? No, or? I think it was more motor racing. I grew up with such a dream of, you know, coming over here and racing, you know, V8 supercars and all of that. Right. Had a lot of friends that had a lot of success and, it's a massive financially orientated sport and sure. just the timing wasn't right for me. Definitely probably wasn't good enough. There was yeah. a lot of these <laughs> factors and they well up and you go, well, I didn't make the grade. And right. then all of a sudden you have this burning desire to prove to yourself that, hey, I'm going to make something big happen. Okay, yeah. um, and secondly, prove to all the people around you that either believed in me or didn't believe in me, um, hey, that I am capable and I'm going to make something yeah, work. Yeah, because so. it, it would have been hard to have a passion Mm. And that passion, then go. Well, it's not working now. Yeah, I haven't yeah. thought about another passion. It's some, yeah. not something you can really <laughs> you know, do casually yeah. because of the expenses. Yeah, associated with racing 100%. sports cars, right? It's almost to give you the car. Yeah, someone has to give you the car. You got to pay for it. My problem was I crashed a lot. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you'd have a weekend, you'd go pretty good. And I'm like, oh, not bad. Didn't crash. And then um, yeah, and then the following weekend, I'd turn up and write the thing off. And go, oh, All right. Here we go. How am I going to pay for this? So cool. So yeah, you're, you're yeah. in Australia. You're like, right, I'm staying here. Yeah. What happens next? Yeah. So at some point in Brisbane. Um, Bumped into a few friends from motor racing. They were all doing the driver training events with Mercedes Benz, Audi, Porsche, all of these cool luxury brands. And I thought, well, real estate's pretty boring. This seems quite cool. Yeah, so, um, way better. Yeah, so I managed to get one event, you know, with Mercedes Benz, um, local event in Brisbane, and it just built up over time. We'd get asked to the next one, and that put me back in the motor racing circles. And in many ways, felt like I was at home again. Mm. Yeah. Um, but it also taught me to really step up my game. For once, I was. You know, representing a very you know world class brand, Mercedes Benz is pretty pretty special. So sure. that opened up a, a world of opportunity for me. The clients that come along to the drive days yeah. are all yeah you know very successful business people, and I uh, just have a knack at chatting to people and making yeah. friends. And yeah. probably wasn't allowed to, but I'd always make sure I took people's phone numbers and emails. <laughs> and um, yeah, so so and that just kind of just keep in touch with people. And then um, the events, you know, Tom Barker events itself. Um, grew from, I really wanted to go to the Formula One in Melbourne, I was living in Brizzy at the time, um, and I called up our boss at Mercedes, I'm like, look mate, if you've got any work going at the Grand Prix, I'll be there, I'll pay for my own flights, you know, book some accommodation, I just want to do it and work there, and made that happen, and I can remember the first night I stayed in a hostel, worst decision in my life, and I sat there and I'm like, right, I need to get my shit together. <laughs> this is not. <laughs> this is not good. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I remember being at the Grand Prix that weekend. I met someone from uh, you know the corporate space within the Grand Prix Corporation. I thought, I reckon I can have one of these hospitality suites. We're working in the Mercedes suite, chauffeuring people around, and I don't know, just you know, the penny drops, and you yeah. think, well, well, you know, at the bottom, you can't go any further. So yeah. further down. So. Um, Flew back to Melbourne, had a meeting with the Grand Prix Corporation, said, look, guys, I really want to have a suite here. And they all laughed at me, which, you know, I'd probably laugh at me too. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, look, well, we've got one suite available, and it's between um, Lamborghini and Aston Martin on the top floor of the Pit Exit building. It's a couple of hundred thousand dollars, but do you think you can do it? 
And I quickly pulled out my credit card and I said, well, there's about four grand left on the limit of that. So take that as a deposit and we'll, we'll make it work. Work and, out the rest. Yeah, and for some reason, I don't know why, but they, they took it, which was cool. And um, yeah, we just grew from there. They were super supportive of me and you know, I really wow. wanted to build the best hospitality experience we could um, at the Grand Prix. And the biggest thing for, was to prove to myself that, hey, I can, yeah. you know, I can turn up at life and really make something big happen. So. That's awesome. Moved to Melbourne, wrote a list of all the people I knew here, got to about five and thought, <laughs> I'm going to need more than that. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was about 10 months of hard work. You know, every person, much like how I met you guys mm. in a bar having a chat. And um, yeah, we grew it, arrived at the Grand Prix in March, you know, had over 100 guests over the weekend, had sponsors like Ralph Lauren. We had, you know, former Formula One drivers in the suite. Yep. Everyone was helicoptering in. It was phenomenal experience. And to grow that out of absolutely nothing. I'm going to sponsor for you is coming after this, cool. actually. Yeah. Thank you. Sounds be, good. That'd be good. Actually, that would be Yeah, that'd be really good. Actually. I'll talk to you about that afterwards. Um, awesome. So, where are we at now with Tom Barker events? Give well, us a little spiel. We're yeah. at chapter two, I okay. like to call it. Cool. So, um, yeah, chapter one was arriving. Chapter two is, you know, backing it up. So, we're going to be at the Grand Prix again next year. We've got some phenomenal, you know, global corporates that have come on board for us to do their incentive programs, you know, so put it, send them down to Point Leo Estate Winery yeah. on the Saturday, they come to Grand Prix with us on the Sunday, and yeah. it's executives from all over the world, and they look at the names and then punch them into LinkedIn, and they go, holy hell, like, they're coming to our party, yeah, so proper, yeah. That's, yeah, it's proper. really special, so a mixture And it's through of, the corporate partnerships you've made. Yeah, yeah and just people that's that I've awesome. met, like one of them, I was literally doing some promotional work through for them through an agency handing out cans of drink three years ago and as the people that I worked with on that from the company have progressed through the ranks we've kept in touch and so good. Yeah. now they're in a point of power and it's it's mega so yeah. those little things are it reminds me why why I'm doing it so there's that there's the amazing you know I guess high net worth individuals that have just become like family to me and mm, you know yeah. they're more than happy to spend money to come and do our experiences so yeah. Grand Prix is a big one uh, we're working on some you know, cool, I guess, travel experiences around, you know, supercar tours in Europe yep. um, with some manufacturers and some cool things that mm. will just be enjoyable with a good bunch of people. And For sure. That's, uh, that's where it's at, you know. Like I said, like, you know, chapter one was about arriving, you know, it's about working out, you know, why are we Optimizing. doing Optimizing. Yeah, and growing and really delivering on, you know, the foundation that we set, so. That's awesome, mate, and how, how do you, I mean, you sort of touched on it a little bit, but in terms of how you go about networking and yeah. and growing growing that community, I guess. Yeah, you so literally just roll up to people starts, and start talking to them, or? It starts just with having a chat, like I'll do a lot of flying. The other day I met a really cool couple on, on the flight just by having a chat to them, and they've already, bo they booked into the Grand Prix just, you know, before we got <laughs> off the plane, it was crazy, but. Um, yeah, it starts just by having a conversation, you know, I don't ever want to grow to be a big business where I'm no longer part personal. of it, you know, it, we're about, we're premium yeah. and we're personable, that's the two things yeah. that we are, so literally just having conversations with people and if you're in the right circles, you'll meet the right people, yeah. but where the big and most important part of the networking comes in is the follow up and that's where, so I cool. guess, technology comes apart, you know, your MailChimp's, your Salesforce and not forgetting, you know, losing that business card is yeah. the, you know, the stupidest thing I've done. I've lost a lot of business cards over the years and I've learned to... Uh, LinkedIn's got a business card scanner. Does it? Wow, I need to Get download it. that. It's yeah. like, it's in the actual LinkedIn app. Yeah, yeah. well, thank Do you that. for that piece yeah, of gold. Yeah, yeah. So, it's, yeah, it's about maximizing the, um, the connection once I make it and then finding ways to get to know those people's connections and that happens through two things them trusting me and going look it's a good young guy having a crack For i sure. want to introduce him to someone yeah. um and then backing it up by delivering it beg my pardon that's the cheese coming <laughs> um, yeah, um, is you know delivering on the result when they come to our experiences go wow these guys are the, the real deal so that's awesome i love that so in line with that being the real deal and building trust, what is your branding strategy? I mean, are you yeah. even at that point yet? Is it mostly sort of feet on the ground or are you thinking about, you know, obviously at the event, yeah. the way you structure that, you've been very thoughtful about the types of sponsors you've got on. So obviously there's yeah. a brand strategy there. Do you have yeah. a more holistic one? Well, the biggest thing that I've learned um, 
That's from, obviously you get a lot, access to lots of mentors because everyone that comes along has yep. been successful, <laughs> willing yeah, to give yeah. me advice, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, and the biggest thing I've learned is positioning. You know, you either have to position your business or the market will position it for you. And yeah. Yeah. that's why, uh, like I said before, the, the two key things that we are is we're premium and we're personable. Um, so we need to know the people, the people need to know us and all the people that come to our events need to know each other. Yeah. And it's sharing that story. Everyone's got an amazing story and the reason why you pay money, because it's not cheap, um, to come to our experience is because you get to hang out with other great people and share an amazing experience. So yeah. it's that and to back that up with being premium. So right. really big attention to detail and just thinking about it. And the biggest thing is just giving a shit. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's like, well, do I want to turn up and enjoy this experience? Yes, well, I've got to make it great. And if it's at my standard, then hopefully it'll be everyone else's. Sure. So, and how do you extend that digitally? Uh, digitally, it's all about the content that we capture is number one. Um, so we've got a lot of great media partners um, who never send me invoices for this work. And it kind of <laughs> feel a bit guilty, but um, you know, they... The ask is coming, I'm Yeah, the <laughs> ask is coming. There's the old Grand Prix ticket gets slipped yeah. to the back. <laughs> but, you know, lots of great people that once again, I look at them and go, okay, well, they're partnered with premium brands. Their clients are premium, so yeah. therefore they're a good fit for us. Positions with us and mm -hmm. they capture some great content. That spreads our message, you know, the visual context. And then it's, it's things like this. It's our EDMs, which is just yeah. a, a really personal newsletter from me telling a story of what we've been up to. And yeah. that's a basic, that's the basis of our marketing strategy. You've been getting our newsletters? Have been, yeah. I like them. Good. Might have stolen You haven't a bit opted of, out uh, yet. So no. <laughs> <laughs> I might have uh, stolen a few tips from them. Well, I'm sure that's like I said before, there. mate, steal whatever you like. It's yeah, fine. it's all sharing, it's all caring. Yeah. So, so that's where it's at. At the end of the day, we don't need to capture, you know, 100,000 people around the world. We only need a couple of hundred at the moment really good quality people that yeah. fit you know our experiences and our brand and then that will grow to a couple of thousand and sure. that's yeah. all we really need we don't need to you know appeal to the masses i'd much rather have a great personal relationship Lifestyle business too right 100%. yeah i think so too i think that's the the right way to go about it especially with us we that's what we wanted to do yeah. you know we're sick of that sort of like well i don't want to but it's just just we wanted to have a different life experience yeah and life experience m meant you know, the way you come, when you come to work, you wanted to have that experience. The way you go home, you have that experience. The way you yeah. interact with people outside of work, like yourself when we met, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Have that experience where it's kind of a little bit hard to get into that brain or mind, but when it happens, it's, it's really good, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. hundred percent. And the, the cool thing that comes with it is, it's that connection with people yeah. and then you have conversations and yeah. you hear people's stories and then the you know utopia that is amazing opportunities come out of it you know this business might not be the thing that makes me hugely successful but it's laying a phenomenal foundation success is happiness though exactly so <laughs> maybe it will yeah. make you hugely successful. oh it definitely yeah. make me happy i love every minute of it but <laughs> it's the case of you know i look back to our why and why we do it and done a lot of work with some people on on that and it's really to create remarkable experiences so that powerful people can connect together and make yeah. a positive impact on the world and I feel like definitely got layer one remarkable experiences powerful people absolutely and then it's working out and it will just happen naturally through conversation you know there'll be an idea there'll be an opportunity and then all of a sudden, you're actually making some big change in the world so love it mate that's cool yeah. so how do you you know obviously you don't need a scale significantly for what you want to do but yeah. how are you using technology to make your day to day because when we were talking you know a simple tool and we don't like when we're obviously public that we are Salesforce partners but we don't yeah. plug actually let's let's talk about that a little bit so we yeah. were going to start this as a more Salesforce specific podcast and, and video video series but yeah. we just felt that it wasn't authentic enough and it was too too salesy yeah. making it about that so yeah. with that in mind i'm not trying to say uh, encourage you it's not a loaded question to say how amazing salesforce is we talk about <laughs> no, like, no, seriously. It's that's serious yeah. i know it's yeah. amazing it's you don't have to the tell cheese. us yeah yeah, yeah. The cheese. that's once again the yeah. cheese it's cheese dreams yeah the cheese is yeah, getting <laughs> excited um we've yeah um, spiky drink as well that, no, yeah. yeah but um but no in all, in all seriousness you know what, what are you what are you looking at implementing what, what have you put in 
how do you feel about technology in your business when you want to stay so personable? Um, yeah. There's always a place for automation. It's just... Like you say, it's a hybrid of it. And if, you know, I think there has to be a mixture of things. And I it's all so. about support and it's an ebb and a flow. So mm -hmm. once we had our conversation, I did get Salesforce and I did just went all out and bought the, <laughs> the big one. Um, it was an enterprise or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's been amazing. I still don't know how to use it properly <laughs> because I don't think you'll ever learn it. But what it does is it's helped me. Um, I'll get to you in a minute, mate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, it, what it does is it helps me. I was at a point where, hey, I needed to employ someone, but I couldn't afford to. Yeah. Where Salesforce gives me a chance to download my brain. That's a really good um, way of thinking of technology, again, not yeah. focusing on Salesforce yet. Go for it. I was trying to help you out there. Yeah. So you a, a bit of a bite. Yeah, but well, we, but for, for us, it's, you know, we, we've now, we're now growing. I mean, our, our headcount's grown by uh, 7x this year, um, which is significant, right? So, uh, well, sorry, by Christmas it will have. Um, so while we were doing that, instead of putting people on unnecessarily, we put processes and technology in place to give us that extra, extra flex so yeah. that you don't have to hire too quickly. Yeah. We love having Replacing people around, <laughs> but people are extremely in. expensive. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's the biggest cost. In, you know, yeah. And it's the organic matter as well. They're yeah. a lot less reliable than technology. If it's set up ways. properly. Yeah. 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 But the hybrid, what you mentioned, is actually a good thing because a lot of people think, oh, technology, automation, no, it's not possible. Actually, you, it is because you know yeah. what? You're creating an extra service for customers yeah. that um, in other ways, if you're too busy, you don't. Uh, things like just notifications, like saying, you know what, we've received your email, yeah. we'll get back to you as soon as possible. And then if you're doing an automation, we are looking into this right now. Sorry for yeah. answering your question for you. No, that's, you, yeah. you guys are 100% right. Yeah. This, is a, this is a group discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All that, and we're living in smash on it. We can talk you, a little bit so you can, you can eat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. what you say yeah. is that technology allows you to you got to use it as an extension of uh, you, is exactly. what I find. And exactly. I can't reach out to everyone, because I will forget to call every person that I know to keep them updated, and it can be a but little you bit annoying. Them updated. Yeah. And you want to give that extra time I think to say, yeah. what you said was on point. If it, inc if it improves the customer experience, yep, it's worth that's doing. Perfect. And that's, yeah. that's a definition. Yeah. Right. And that's exactly what, it, what it's mm -hmm. done for us, and combination of Salesforce, MailChimp, yeah. they're our main two. Mm -hmm. um, and then your social media channels, which yeah. is just nice to look at for yeah. people mm. you can buy that and it's um yeah it's certainly a lot better than not having it that's for sure no oh, 100 percent. pen and paper exactly yeah are you prepared for lightning round i'm not prepared for I lightning knew round. You were. that's why i was busting to ask you i know <laughs> and i knew it all right so lightning round sort of question she's gonna have to answer really quickly yeah yeah now think about it so one thing you can't live without <sighs> Mm. Travel. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite top of wine. Definitely a good Pinot. Good. Yes. Yeah. Favorite Ooh. band or artist. Oh, 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 Martin Garrix. Yeah, good, yeah. good, good. Yeah. He's like about you. your size, actually. Yeah, he's cool. <laughs> yeah. Young and successful. Entrepreneur so. you most admire. Entrepreneur I most admire. Oh. It would be someone that no one really knows. One of my clients, uh, guy Scott Houston. So he's a um, he's a legend, ex special forces, and then he's yeah, well, gone from awesome. there into you know, building an incredibly successful business in the you know risk solutions in the mining industry oh, okay. and securities and whatnot. And he's just a mega operator. So awesome. um, yeah, definitely look up to him. Uh, iPhone or Android? iPhone. What do you do for fun? What do I do for fun? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I like, a tennis I like match going like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what is the CD you last bought? CD I last bought? I don't think Were I, you alive? I don't, think, I, I don't yeah, think I've ever bought a CD. <laughs> I had a CD bought for me. Yeah. It would have been, well, now 24 when yeah. I was eight. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 no CDs. Uh, what is the last movie you saw? Last movie I saw, wow, what was that? Uh, yeah, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah, mm. and great it was movie. mega. That's yeah, amazing. You just got to be patient. Yeah, yeah I don't know like, why yeah, yeah. people are giving a shit. They yeah. must just not get it. Because you just got to no, enjoy gotta the patient. visual spectacle of it. And go, damn, yeah. this looks cool. He, and then when it all happens, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. going into a lot of detail as well, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, Texas talking. Uh, definitely a talker. 
girls hate it because yeah. you're missing you like yo what's up and like why'd you call me you weirdo <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just better nickname your parents gave you um, is it tw- 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 <laughs> no that wasn't there they used to call me no, Tommy Tiffy because I was little okay. Tommy, Tommy Tiffy yep. yeah nice yep. and your favourite holiday destination favourite holiday destination uh, just being there Queenstown Queenstown good okay yeah, yeah. Awesome, nice. mate. Mm. Thanks so much for, having, for coming on. Yep. That's cool. Amazing. Uh, Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you next time. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe to watch more episodes as they launch. Don't forget to share with your friends and click here to watch more videos.